My second time. Yeah, my first time was earlier this year. Uh, I showed at Art Stage Jakarta not too long ago. It was pretty amazing. Um, I didn't I didn't know what to expect. You know, my first time here, I'd never even heard of Jakarta, <laughs> but uh, but it seemed interesting. And, and I, I one of my mantras is you know try to try to experience new things. And if you get the opportunity to leave, you know your comfort zone and then, then do it. So jumped on a plane and, uh, and came in. Everyone was so accepting and kind. I feel like everyone here is very, very curious about new things. They were welcoming me with open arms. I've always called myself a painter, but um, yeah, that's an interesting question because I've, I've recently started um, investigating 3D work, you know, some more sculpture type work, which I am painting on. I think artist might be a more appropriate term at times. But there's something about brush to canvas, you know, that, that timeless uh, application of, of paint, you know, of painting that, I, that I've, I've just always been drawn to. So yeah, there, I think there's something unique and special about calling yourself a painter. Um, because I do incorporate kind of a horizon you know, in a lot of a lot of my work, and I do that on purpose because I feel like it's kind of tied to our equilibrium, our like sense of you know sense of place in the world, and it's something that's like an endemic foundation. You know, we can familiarize ourselves with that right away. It's like this native thing, and so I think from there I can ha access that immediate you know familiarity, and then start the dialogue of color and emotion and depth of field and why not only what you're looking at, but why you see it a certain way. I think color field work in the abstract world is a very open format to allow people to see work from where they might be at in their lives, whether it's from a place of love, a place of tragedy, you know, hopefully a place of honesty. That's, that's kind of the goal. I, I recently started doing some collaborations with some friends whose art I really like. Um, but it, it's pretty new, so it can be a tricky endeavor. But with the right, the right person, it can create some really amazing stuff. The best, you know, collaborations I think are, you have to pair yourself with someone who can do something you can't do, right? Um, so I recently, you know, did some pieces with uh, a sculptor. You know, I, I a weld, and he's welding and doing all the things I, I can't weld. You know, <laughs> so, so that's, that's attractive to me, you know, that skill. Well, I, I was just accepted into a museum, my first museum um, in Sacramento. It's my hometown. So that was, that's a big, that's like bucket list, you know, that's like, you know. And from there, hopefully it'll, yeah, I can, I can work on, work towards getting into more museums. But that's, that's always been high on my list. The notoriety and respect of that is very attractive to me. And my father being a professor, you know, I think um, I was just very excited to tell him about that. You know, it kind of solidifies a lot for me. Uh, so that's that's a big one um, as a painter. Just be as great as I can. You know, keep pushing, keep growing, pursuing. You know, things like the museum acquisition. And it's it's interesting because when you create a body of work that is received well and sells well and keeps selling well, that's all. Okay, well, I should just do that, right? How that leads to insanity, and 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 it leads to repetition. And repetition isn't always a bad thing, you know. I think it can make you a better painter. But yeah, you you, you have to you have to abandon what is good, you know, to achieve something great. I think, and it's hard sometimes.